There is an Igbo adage that says, if you remove the tick from Mr. Dog's skin, you should show it to him so that he doesn't think you are pinching him and attack you. Beloved in the Lord, last Sunday we spoke at length about the love of God, neighbor. Today, the liturgy presents us with two clear examples of love of God and neighbor. In the first reading, the prophet Elijah asked for water to drink from this widow of Zarephath who was about to die with her son because of famine and the drought. This woman did not hesitate to help this stranger who ended up being a prophet. Let's not go into details but let's emphasize that the widow had not agreed to help the prophet Elisha in his capacity as a prophet. No. Instead, she found out that he was a prophet while she was already helping him. When the prophet takes his request to a step further, the woman's answer clearly shows her love for God. She ended up accepting the second request of this stranger just for the love of God in whose name the prophet reassured her. The second request was, you know, to make a cake out of the last flour and oil. The scenario in the gospel is not so different. This time, it is the radical love and zeal for God that is at work. Only love, trust and hope can drive somebody to give such an offering. The widow put her last two coins as a symbolic gift of her whole life because we all know that the money is sine qua non for our social sustenance. Beloved in the Lord, these two widows leave us today with some fundamental teachings. First, love in inconvenience. True love is verified not only when the situation is normal, but also and especially when the situation is defiant, when there is no profit in sight. The gestures of true love do not often follow the logic of convenience. When love becomes a virtue, that is a habit, sometimes we are surprised by our own acts of charity because we keep convenience aside. But we do not regret it rather there is an internal joy when a gesture of love is sincere true love is verified in difficult situations second transfer of aggression a selfish person would accuse and insult the prophet of wanting to add to his misfortune how often do we see people fall into depression engage in crimes, criminal acts, or become selfish just because life presents them with a bitter situation. If the prophet's first request had been denied, he would not have made the second request that resulted in the miracle of abundance that saved the life of that woman and the son. Let's not let life situation push us to perform acts of hatred or lose our personality. No transference of aggression, but let us remain good to all because when God hears our prayers, he intervenes through our human brothers and sisters. But guess what? We do not know who exactly. Love opens spiritual and physical doors. Number three, be positive. Many people abuse God when situations become difficult, but today we learn that it is better to die in a good relationship with God. Zarephath's widow was about to die. So humanly speaking, not giving to the prophet would not have changed her fate and the fate of her son. But it is very touching to see how she no longer argued the moment the prophet invoked the name of God. Even in the gospel, the widow knew that the two coins were insignificant, but she still gave them out of love and total trust, a gesture that challenged 
the throne of God. Whatever be the case, the gestures of these two women remind us of the popular expression, trusting in God means if I die, I die, if I perish, I perish. 4. Generosity and Philanthropy It is good to be a philanthropist and God rewards that, but these widows today teach us that we should not wait for abundance before sharing. True love, heroism, and philanthropism is to share the real little thing we have. Whatever our condition is, we are better than some people. True giving is when we share in insufficiency. Quantity does not count but the heart. Dearly beloved, in reading and meditating of these texts, let us emphasize that God is not against saving for the family. I mean, you making savings for your family, for your children, and for your future. Jesus is not telling us to deposit all our wages or profits in the collection box. No. But today's liturgy invites us to be generous to God and our neighbors, especially in difficult times. Beloved in the Lord, there is no regret in love unless we have a hidden agenda. Let us work so that love of God and neighbor become reflex in our lives, a habit, a virtue. Let love lead. Dear Lord, give us the grace to love our neighbors and to abandon ourselves in your love, in season and out of season. Amen.